Well, Paul, I'm sure the memories come flooding back whenever you hear the ballad of Swansea Jack. But after that came out, after the Swansea City song first came out, and it was late 70s, where did you and Roger Evans go then? Uh, well, Roger and myself, after that, um, we started to pen quite a lot of songs together because we were asked to do uh, certain projects for people. Um, we did uh, quite a bit for uh, HTV and S4C at the time. Um, and then came um, some local artists who asked us to pen some stuff together for them, which we did. Um, and then came the call from Coronation Street from um, Granada TV. So I went to work up there for them with, uh, for a while, um, doing some guitar music for Vera Duckworth and Bill Tarney and several other people and um, it just went on from there and we just enjoyed it, you know. But but the two of you decided that as well as conquering South Wales with your song, a little bit of world domination wouldn't go amiss, didn't it? No, Roger penned uh, this song together called American Dream. Um, so we thought what better way to do this than to go and launch it in America, which we did. Uh, we went over to San Francisco in 1980 um, we were promised the earth by this music company um, and we'd done a lot of rehearsing ready for it and our first gig was supposed to be with John Denver um, over I think it's Candlewick Park where the 49ers were playing um, but that didn't materialise um, so we, we'd picked all our gear and everything from the music stores over there we picked all the best stuff we were ready to go but Nothing really materialised from it, and uh, Roger stayed in America after for a while just to try and pen a deal together, but it never really worked out. I think it was the wrong time, although I must say that the songs that he wrote for America are still up in my archives, and they are really good songs. I mean, were you ever tempted out in America to just give them a blast of Take Me to the Vetchfield? Oh, big time, yeah. <laughs> Especially at uh, Candlewick Park, you know. Can you imagine doing it there? You know, that would have been uh, something superb, but unfortunately that didn't materialise. We were let down by too many people in the music industry there. I've spoken to people in trying to track you down about Roger Evans and that, and they say that his songwriting was right up there. Now, you're in the music business. Where would you rate him? Um, Roger's the best writer that's, that's come out, I think, of Swansea, to be honest. I, I mean, a great friend of mine, um, one songwriter of the year, a guy called Steve Joseph, I was presented by Francis Lay, who wrote uh, A Man and a Woman, uh, and he's moved to America now, and Steve was a brilliant writer as well, Steve Joseph. Uh, but Roger, uh, for me, was the number one writer from Swansea, without a doubt. Some of the songs that he wrote were superb. Sadly, of course, Roger no longer with us. About 12 years ago now, isn't it, that he passed away? That's right, sadly, yeah. And I still keep in touch with his wife and family now and again as well. And the song, as you say, it, it's been sung everywhere, probably every football ground that Swansea City have been, but maybe no more so than the day that they clinched a place in the Premier League. What, what was that like for you? Well, if you can imagine, you know, all those people, 30,000 plus, singing our song, you know, it just, I just had goosebumps, you know, and I, I still got the Red and Swansea game on television, you know, I won't get rid of that. Uh, I mean, it's superb, but as I said before, Anthony, when I hear the supporters singing the song, I'm sure Roger's listening from above as well, and, um, you know, he, he did remarkable with that, and the, it, the song just lives on, it'll never die. Are you surprised with the song, though, in a way? Because, as you say, it specifically depicts certain games back in the 70s. And yet, you see people down at the Liberty Stadium now, 10 years of age, 15 years of age, they wouldn't have remembered those games, but they sing that song. They love that song. It's never needed to be changed. No, that's right, exactly. Um, I think it's it's because, you know, take me to the vet field way down by the sea, you know, where I will follow Swansea, Swansea City. That's just, you know, what a start to a song. You know, I mean, if anybody else wrote that, people would laugh. But I think it's what followed it as well. And the the choruses, which are very catchy, the fact that we had the Swans on there. We'd beaten Spurs at White Hart Lane, which is a big thing. 
uh, it was all in the song. I mean, they were great times, Dunavetch. Everybody, the you know, kids now, as you say, 10 and 12, all their parents used to go down the vetch. So they have great memories of it. And the children can even watch, you know, DVDs now and videos on YouTube of the, the swans playing down there. And they can see what an atmosphere it was, you know, when we were all stood up and on the edge of the pitch, you know. You could never imagine, though, when uh, Roger Evans walked up to you and said, I've penned a song that 35 years on, we'd still be talking about it. Definitely not. No, uh, without a doubt. I mean, no, um, I, ne I never thought to this day, you know, that it would take off uh, as much as it did. Um, and long may it continue. That's all I can say.